Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Thought I'd get the Flawless Raider Trophy in Destiny today, and I know a lot of people like me don't have it and probably want it, so uh, hopefully this video will help you get it as I get it. Uh, to begin with, I'm going with the easiest possible build. Um, you can pretty much run with whatever you like, but for the Flawless Raider Trophy, I want to have as few risks and as uh, the best capabilities I have for each different section of the raid and I think that comes by being a blade dancer to begin with followed by gunslinger later on. The blade dancer makes the lamp room, the first stage of the raid, uh, a lot more straightforward than it otherwise would be uh, and that's thanks to invisibility perks that the blade dancer has. You don't have to run the blade dancer though because the primary invisibility perk I, I, I'm using uh, comes from the exotic gauntlets that don't touch me. You can wear the Don't Touch Me's as a Gunslinger or uh, as a uh, Blade Dancer or as a Night Stalker, it's up to you. But with the Blade Dancer you get an extra invisibility from your super, also from crouching and also from melleeing. So with those little extra perks it makes the lamp room uh, a lot, a lot uh, uh, easier to navigate than it would if you don't have those extra invisibility perks. So. Um, I apologize for the sound here, the sound is a little sketchy. I bought myself a Razor Ripsaw capture card and it's replacing my Elgato, but in replacing it I completely forgot to change the audio renderer over and the result is the sound in this is a little little crappy. So I apologize for that and I'll, I'll fix that up for my later videos, but as you go on I'm sure you'll get used to it at least or be able to deal with it. So. So anyway, once I get into the lamp room, uh, I'm not particularly concerned about shooting enemies, uh, just running through. With the don't touch me's and the extra invisibility perks, you more or less can just concentrate on running lamp to lamp. If you run into thrall, don't worry, the don't touch me's will, will ultimately turn you invisible if they attack you. Um, I run to the third lamp first, I run past the first two lamps. The weight of darkness gets a bit much by the third, but if you're just running, you don't really need to stop at the first two lamps. Um, you saw the don't touch me them work. I mean, uh, if you've got those, uh, you don't need to play this normally. Like I'm shooting here, but I don't really need to. I'm just doing it for fun, to be honest. Um, moving along, see the upper lamp up top? That's the one I, I look for, um, which is the fifth lamp. When you get to the fifth lamp, there's a little shortcut you can take. It cuts out a few lamps and just makes the whole process a bit faster. When you get to this lamp, just where I'm looking now, it's slightly to the left of it. If you run through this little area, you'll see a ledge. If you follow the ledge forward, it dips a little bit to the left. Don't fall off because you'll be back to square one. Um, but if you follow this ledge around and then the next lamp is to the right, it cuts out a few lamps and saves a bit of time. You don't have to do that. You can keep running, but since uh, the Don't Touch Me is continually turning you invisible, it's not like you're really cheese and everything, it's just, it just moves you along a little bit faster. Some people tend to jump on the on a rock next to the second lamp and then jump up onto that, that wall. Um, you can do that if you want. If I find it a little, uh, it's it's not that difficult, but it can be a little tricky. Sometimes the weight of darkness pulls you down when, when you've done exactly what you did before when you got up there. And I think for a, and if you're trying to do a flawless run, that can be very a bit detrimental to you. So. I tend to not use that rock and, and just run through the maze. Um, you don't really have to watch out for that night either. Uh, just keep running all the way through. You'll notice I have a sniper rifle already equipped in my secondary slot. That's to deal with the ogre at the end. If you're a level, if you're a light level 400, like I am in this. Um, you don't really need a sniper rifle to take out the ogre. The ogre, from where I'll, I'll show you that I normally stand, well not normally, but stand in this case, um, the ogre is very, very easy to take out with a with a standard scout rifle. It, it's not he's not very tough, so. But I'll have a sniper rifle equipped just to make sure that it's it's nice, ni nice and easy to take him out fast. Uh, for the rest of the raid, I'll, I'll run with a shotgun. Um, so once you get to the middle here, uh, just run past that lamp, take a little bit of weight of darkness off, stand on the platform to trigger it, run back, a little bit more darkness off, then this rock to the left is where I like to stand. You can die on this rock unless you stand right here on the corner, 
If you stand right here on the corner, the explosion from the lamp will not kill you. Um, you can kill a few thrall right there in a bunch and get, a, get some uh, ammo drops. The ogre will appear over there where I'm looking now. He generally appears behind that lamp and gets a little confused. It gives you plenty of time to size him up. There's no need to, to rush. Once he sticks his head out, you can take him out either with your sniper or with a scout rifle. You'll find it um, works a little bit slower, but just as well. Once he's dead, all you have to do is wait. Um, at this point, you can switch to the gunslinger class. I don't do that right now. I could have. I, I normally would have. But to be honest, I was hearing all the thrall around me and just wanted to look around and try and find them and shoot them for a bit of fun. I only managed to get him, so it didn't really work out for me, but you can switch to the Gunslinger now. I'll switch in just a moment. The reason I switched to the Gunslinger is to take advantage of the triple jump in the, in the next section, um, where you build the, build the bridge. When you, uh, when I normally play this, sometimes I like to build the bridge instead of uh, sword flying across the bridge. However, building the bridge can be a little finicky. If you're going for the Flawless Raider Trophy, I don't really recommend trying to build the bridge unless you're 100% you're comfortable you can do it each and every time. I'm not, because I find that the Sword Bearing Knight doesn't always play nice. Sometimes he runs out and then runs off and hides, and when he hides it makes it very difficult to, to build a bridge and get him to follow you and get his sword without the sword running out or the bridge stopping building. So. I find to get the Flawless Raider Trophy, I think flying across with the sword is the best bet. If you have trouble with that, that's okay. There's a very easy method to do it. Um, as a gunslinger, it's it's quite easy to do with the, the triple jump, but um, with your uh, Bones of EO on, which I'm going to put on now, I'll replace the Don't Touch Me's because I don't need those anymore. Um, put on the Bones of EO to give you an extra jump, and that extra jump uh, almost makes the, the fly across trivial. Uh, it can, I mean, you can stuff it up, but once you once once you you get the method down that I'm about to show you, you you'll find that nine times out of ten, or if not ninety nine times out of a hundred, you'll get it right. Normally, I'd run up and I would shotgun the sword bearer uh, and just grab his sword, but I noticed I only had two bullets left, so I thought I'd I'd take it take some of his health off first. Uh, I make a bit of a mistake here because I ran down and and got myself surrounded and whatnot, but I'm not panicking, and I think that's the key for getting the Flawless Raider Trophy, is to not panic and, and take it all calmly. Now, when you jump up on this rock to, to Swordfly Cross, see where my, I place my cursor on that white straight line? If you place your cursor on that straight line, then use all of your Bones of EO jumps. It gives you plenty of lift to Swordfly all the way across to here. Keep sword flying, even if you go into the edge, you want to get into the edge right there and then just jump off it. The sword will get into the edge, just keep swinging it at the edge. And it works It works every time, I've personally never fallen off doing it that way. Typically I do like to uh, just use the uh, the jump and go straight to the middle of the, um, the bridge, but I think for the flawless, I have fallen off to uh, miss the middle of that sometimes, so I think by going to that side rock here, not, you've got a, a good chance of, of making it and not screwing up your run. Um, I always go to the to this side of uh, this area. Some people hide at the front and some people hide at the rock near the, the main doors. I prefer this side uh, for two reasons. Uh, number one is you get a very clear shot at the first ogre that comes out. And two, you, it's very difficult to die here. All you have to do is keep your eye on three thrall that periodically spawn out of those doors. Here they come now. They'll periodically spawn, but they're easy to take down. If you keep your eye on those, then the, the once the ogre comes out, you can take him out before he even gets off that top platform. If you're using the golden gun like I am, you can also take that pesky little wizard out. And then all you've got to do is kill the, the ogre. Um, this, by, by standing in this area, instead of hiding behind uh, near the platform at the front or taking the strategy of the rock, I think you can get through this area a lot quicker. I might be wrong about that, but it works for me, so uh, I think this is this is the way to go if you're trying to do your flawless. It's, it's a lot less danger. You're never in, a, never in any real danger as long as you keep your eye on those, those thrall. For the next section, uh, I, hard mode has made it so that I normally would just run through and rocket each shrieker as I go and sprint for my life. But since you can die in this section, uh, 
I think it's a, it's probably prudent to t take it easy, take out the first shrieker from the door, uh, move back a bit, wait for the shriekers' homing missiles to to die out before going in there to, to take out the second sh second sh shrieker. Um, now. You can take out take out some of the thrall if you want, but um, basically what you want to do is shoot the next shriek, shrieker and then back out again to let its homing missiles uh, disappear as well. I do that. I sort of jump into a bunch of thrall here, which is a bit of a mistake. But like I said before, if you're taking it casually um, and you're not too worried about uh, you don't let yourself get too worried about dying. If ever you get yourself into a situation where you're surrounded by thrall or enemies like that, the trick is just to jump a lot. The more you jump, the more you can move around, the more you can get away, the less they can attack you. It's a pretty good rule of thumb for this part and, and for the next part of the raid, uh, as you'll see in a moment. So, when running through this room, stick to the left. Uh, when you see a thrall, jump as high as you can. You can jump right over it with the bones of air like I did there and, and you won't take any damage. So this is going pretty smoothly. Um, at this point of the the raid, I like to make sure I've got uh, some. Uh, make sure you've got some rockets. Pop a heavy if you need to, um, and I keep the bones of EO on because I like to go through this door up ahead and then zip to the left and jump straight up to the ledge. Some people run up the stairs past those knights and then around and up the stairs to the left. I think that adds a little bit, a little bit of time. Uh, since you're on a time limit here because of the Death Singer song starting, I prefer to just gain a few seconds by not doing that. Um, normally I throw a grenade and shoot the, the the wizard there. She did dodge it though, which made it a little bit more difficult. But like I said before, if you get into a situation where enemies are around you hassling, just keep jumping and you should be fine. Uh, like I'm, I'm just constantly in the air and because I'm constantly in the air, I'm not really taking any damage. Make sure you take out the wizard and the shrieker while you're in this room. Don't try and do it from outside. Uh, pretty much just run in. Normally the, the wizard will play ball and just stay straight in front of you. She won't dodge like she did with me. But um, if you want to make sure of that, don't throw a grenade. If you don't throw a grenade, she probably won't dodge. In this case, she doesn't dodge. The grenade hits her, and then I finish her off with a couple of little scout rifles. You don't need to take the second shrieker out while you're in this room, and I recommend not doing it if you're trying to go flawless. Um, the reason is the knights with the sword and the acolytes shooting you can can kill you if you're a little unlucky. So, and you don't need to be. You can just take the shrieker out from outside of the door with a standard scout rifle, like I just did. Run down, stand in this room to let the shriekers' missiles go away. Pop a heavy if you need to, or if you if you don't have enough enough ammo. Um, now, a lot of people tend to run in here and try to kill the Death Singer at this point. I think that will cause, can cause you all sorts of trouble. Um, you might be able to kill her, but there are ads in there and, and they, can, they can kill you. I tend, generally come out here and try and get the Death Singer's attention through that window. She can't see me and I can't see her, but that's okay this time because I know she'll still be on this side when I go in there, if I don't run into the room and, and take shots at her or, or cause her to move. If you do cause her to move, you can, she can swing around the back and, and that can make it a bit more difficult for you. But if you just stay out here until her liturgy song begins, you can be fairly sure that she'll be in a nice position, uh, a nice safe position for you to kill her. Uh, fairly quickly. So what I do, just take out as many ads as you can. As soon as you see her liturgy has started, you've got, what, 30 seconds I think it is to, to kill her. That is plenty of time. She's not very strong at the current light level, if you're a high enough light level. She's not even really that strong if you're uh, you know, a lower light level than 400. But see, her liturgy has begun now, so run in here and jump up on this little ledge here. That keeps you safe from the thrall. There she is, right, perfectly in line. Three golden gunshots will take her out. Um, Galahorn or Sniper or Scout Rifle will do the same thing. If you can't see her when you do run in there, um, I'm going to speed the film up here by the way because the next stage is just clearing ads for forever and you don't want to sit through that. Um, yeah, if you, if you can't see the Death Singer when you do jump on that ledge, that's okay. Just run in a little bit further until you can see her. Um, be sure to jump up in the air a lot if you get hassled by any ads, but it, she's pretty. She's not that that terribly strong, and you do not need to run into the room to. If you didn't get in there already and make her move her position, you'd be able to kill her just the same. It's just a little safer. It's just a lot safer, I should say, when you're on that little ledge. 
At this point of the thing, uh, at this point of the raid, uh, you make sure if you're going for the flawless uh, raider trophy that you kill every single ad before you trigger the next section. That's why I'm out here. I want to make sure that I don't accidentally bump into the crystal uh, that you touch to start the final part of the raid. The reason for that is uh, all of these ads can be problematic for you. They can turn uh, your, the final stage into a, a, a bit troublesome. Acolytes shooting at you, extra knights waiting for you once once you run out to try and get Crota. Some of them might even run out onto the ledge where Crota is and hassle you while you're using your, uh, your sword against him. So make sure every single ad is dead before you touch that, that crystal. And that will make sure that no unforeseen circumstances are going to happen. So I've killed them all now. I touch this. Now, as far as weapons go, some people prefer to, to run down the, once they get out of this room. Well, first, before I get to that, uh, with this room, again, you're pretty safe, really, with the level of the ads, but just to be sure, uh, I like to put my back in here so that the uh, ads behind me can't see me, I can just concentrate on one side at a time. So I'll clear, I'll do, I'll clear out the, the left side, and then I'll turn around and, and clear out the right. Now, what I was saying before about the sniper rifle is some people like to run out of this room, run down to the bottom stairs, snipe the sword bearer, and then get his sword. Uh, I don't like to do that. Uh, I find that can make it more troublesome for me with thrall to deal with. Uh, it's not too bad if you're trying to be, if you're uh, can super up as a blade dancer and become invisible. But I've chosen to be a gunslinger for this, um, so that's I won't be doing that. Instead, I prefer to use a shotgun. So when uh, when the sword bearer comes out, I like to be right in his face, and that's why I've got my shotgun up and ready right now. Uh, Gallahorn's up and ready. Make sure you've got that heavy popped, or you popped the heavy before, or you, you check for heavy to make sure you've got a full amount of heavy before you run out. Now, with the next part, uh, you want to get the chalice, because obviously your health doesn't heal uh, without holding the chalice. So. I don't need Bones of Eo, no big jumps necessary, but Thrall can be can be annoying when you're killing the sword bearer, so I put the Don't Touch Me's back on, change to a shotgun, run down here, jump up to pick up the chalice, wait for the sword bearer to come out of the door. When he comes out of the door, I grenade him, don't need to grenade him, could still just jump down and, stand and uh, shoot him with a shotgun. See, the Thrall hit me, but the Don't Touch Me saved me. Now when you jump up here, Drop the sword whilst facing the wall. The reason I recommend that on a flawless run is because sometimes when you uh, drop the sword, if you're not facing the, the wall, sometimes you can fall to the ground and that can upset your run a little bit and slow your time down. Watch me again, facing the wall, turn around, two shots. Now I did do 3R2s on, on the Crota a minute ago, but I recommend hitting 3R1s like this and then an R2. The reason I recommend that is you can take a little bit more damage off him and it's a little easier to do if you're not a com complete expert with the sword. Sometimes getting your R2 timings uh, can be a little tr troublesome if you're, if you're not com completely used to it or if you haven't practiced a lot, but uh, three R1s and an R2 is, is pretty easy to time. Now, once, you, once, you've hit, once you've done the maximum number of hits that your time with the sword allowed you to do, I recommend running into this room, not anywhere else. The reason for that is, uh, apart from the initial thrall in this room, which there's only a couple and they're easy to deal with, uh, you don't have to worry about any other ads come, uh, hassling you in here. It's, it's basically a, a fairly safe room. You, got, you get eyes on Crota so you can see when Crota moves, but better still, the sword bearer always comes to this room. Sometimes he'll hide behind things and you've got to, it's a little difficult to attract his attention if you go somewhere else. If you want to try and take him on in the middle, you've got Thrall to deal with all around you. But here, see, I can see, from this position, I can see Crota. I can see when he moves. The moment he moves, I know that's the time I want to go out and get the sword bearer. And I know the sword bearer will come into this room because when you attract his attention here, he always does. Now, there are some enemies behind there. I just make some shots to pull them out. That will also bring the sword bearer. There he comes, right on cue. So I track him over. Very easy, you don't have to deal with any thrall around you. Pick up the sword and remember again, face the wall when you're dropping the sword. Two shots on Crota to bring him down. Use a sword swing to get to him faster. Three R1s and an R2. And that was the first time I ever got a, uh, a flawless Raider trophy. And hopefully the strategy that I used uh, will work for you too. I'm sure it will. It's, 
I believe the best build and best strategy for obtaining it. Um, good luck with it, and thanks for watching.